So we are going to get started. Um, we are so glad you've joined us for yet another town hall. Again, two years ago, who knew we would do all this stuff? But um, it's been a nice tool to have to be able to reach people and, and see everybody and share different pieces of news. So um, we're glad you're here. So our first exciting thing is that we had a new staff member join us this week. Um, as most of you know, Elise Brown moved to a different department on campus. And now we are happy to welcome Eric Ayers to our staff. And Eric, do you want to say hello? I just want to say I am I'm thrilled to be here. Um, I'm excited to get started. Um, <laughs> I, I couldn't wait to get back in here today for my second day. So I'm really happy to be here. I want to get to know everybody and um, I'm excited. I really am. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. We are glad to have Eric with us. We um, tried not to overwhelm him yesterday, but I was glad to see that he came back this morning. So, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, so make sure the next time you're here in the building to come by and say hello. Um, Eric is sitting at the desk right outside my office and he is looking forward to meeting everybody and he appreciates that you're all wearing name tags. Just yes, like I, yeah. I, I'm going to need them. Yes, that's right. <laughs> So thanks, Eric. We are glad you're here. Oh, sorry, you all. I'm, I removed the wrong name. Tonight. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> sorry. Okay. So um, we are, um, as you know, we're wrapping up our winter term. We start our spring term um, in a couple of weeks. We have registered, started registration for spring term, but there are plenty of spaces still open in a lot of our classes. So if you've not registered yet, um, get on that. If you have friends who might want to join us, encourage them to um, check us out. We would love to welcome more people. I am excited. Last, so if, if you all know, the year that the pandemic began, we were at 2,600 members. Last year, when we were fully on Zoom, we um, cut that by about 50%. We were at 1,300 members. And so at the beginning of this fall, I thought, wow, if we could get to 1800 members, I would feel so good about that. But I really didn't tell anybody that was my goal because I didn't think we'd make it. But we are at 1884 members as of right now. So um, thank you all for, for joining us and showing faith in our program during this time and um, for sharing it with other people. We're continuing to pick up brand new members. And so we are thrilled to have so many people coming back to Ali, and we only hope that will continue, um, that we'll continue to grow and get back to our former strength over the next several months. So we are glad that you are here. So um, the, the other big reason we called this meeting today was to let you know about new protocols here at Furman. So as many of you know, the CDC announced new guidance over the past week or so and Furman has throughout the pandemic followed CDC guidance. So effective tomorrow, which is Saturday, March 5th, um, masks will be optional in all Furman buildings, including the Herring Center. So of course, if you wanna wear a mask, you are fully free to wear a mask. Um, I imagine that some of our members will continue to do that. If you come in my office with a mask on, I'm gonna put one on because I want you to feel comfortable here, but masks are going to be optional um, and that's based on CDC guidance. It's also based on the high vaccination rate of the Furman community, including our members. We're at like 97% vaccination, fully vaccinated with boosters and everything here. So based on all of that, um, that is the decision. So that also means some other things for campus. So many of you have been asking about when other things will open up. So the library will now be open to the public and that starts tomorrow. Um, although I will tell you next week is spring break for Furman students. So hours are a little bit wonky. So I would check the website before you just showed up at the library um, tomorrow morning. But that will be available to Furman, to all members. Um, the dining hall is not going to be open yet. And that is not a COVID issue. That is a staffing issue. As, as many of you know, lots of restaurants and other businesses all over the country have had trouble keeping adequate staffing. And so the dining hall has been a victim of that as well. 
So they have just enough staff to, to feed the, the students who live here and have to go to the dining hall to eat. Um, so they do plan for the dining hall to open to the public, which includes all members around May 9th, which is the end of the spring semester for the students. So we will keep you posted on that and stay tuned. There might even be an Ali social event in the dining hall so we can all remember how great it is to go over there. So we will um, have some fun around that. However, the other dining facilities on Furman's campus will open um, after spring break. As I said, next week is spring break, so they're all closed to everyone. But after that, if you wanna to go to the student center, if you remember from two years ago, there's a food court in the student center that has like a Chick-fil-A, a Moe's. Um, I think they have sushi. There's a um, like a sandwich salad, grab and go kind of thing. That will be open to Ali members to get lunch. There is also a um, more of a restaurant called the Paddock in the student center. You order at the counter and sit down and they bring you their food. It's that kind of place. So um, that will be open as well. And so that will be um, a great new thing to um, be able to have back for all of you to enjoy while you're on campus. Um, before now, events on campus have opened up to the public. You notice in Ollie Notes, we've shared with you some, some of the lectures that might be on campus or different music department events. That will continue. Um, some will not be fully open to the public for various reasons, like room size, there's not enough room to accommodate the students and other people or other things, but we will let you know in Ollie Notes about anything that's open to everybody that you might be interested in attending. Um, also, I think a lot of people will be glad to hear that with the mask becoming optional, food will now be allowed in the Herring Center. So lunch and learn can be lunch and learn again. You can bring your lunch for lunch and learn. Um, you can also enjoy lunch in the lobby as you've done before. Um, you know, cooking classes starting um, in the spring term. There is one today and we still have to follow the current protocols, but cooking classes in the spring term will be able to enjoy the food that they cook um, while they're cooking it. And um, with that, uh, if you haven't already figured it out, our coffee bar will return. So um, I bet there are lots of smiles about that. So we are looking forward to um, bringing that back. And so beginning with the spring term, the first day of spring classes, there will be, there will be coffee and just watch for um, a little celebration around that. Um, I was trying to think about all the different ways that these new um, protocols will affect us. Um, those of you who are hikers, you'll know that we have um, required masks when you are in the car riding to your um, hike locations when you carpool with other members of the class. What, what this will change to now is that the driver of the car can determine if, um, if that person wants masks worn in his car, then his or her car, then that's what they will do. So we'll let the individual carpools work that out, but it is at the discretion of the driver. And I will communicate that to all the hiking groups as well. So those are all of the changes and new things. I'm sure you all have questions, so you can start to put them in the chat and we will answer those. While, while you take a minute to put any questions you have in there, I'll just say that um, if there's anyone on, on the call that hasn't been coming to class in person because you just didn't wanna wear a mask for an hour and a half, now's your time. If you have friends who've been saying, oh, I'll come back to Ollie when there are no more masks, let them know that, that here we are and it's perfect timing because it's, there's plenty of time to still register for the spring. One more thing on COVID that I'll say before I get to the questions is that if you are new to us this term, you should have seen um, in, in the brochure that any of our members um, need to have, need to either submit their completed vaccination record or sign um, an opt-out form that I have, we have here available for you. And we need to have that for everybody um, who is participating in in-person classes here at Ollie. So if you've already sent yours in, you're, you're great. I don't need to see it again. But if you have not done that before, we need to um, see those. And I will send um, emails to um, those that we need to hear from. So let's get to our questions here. 
Um, welcome, Eric. Yes. And so that's great. Um, can all your members join the pack now? Um, the pack, um, uh, thank you for mentioning that. I knew there was one thing I had left out. Not quite. They are working on um, refining the processes for the public to come into the pack. So stay tuned for that. We will let you know as soon as we have updated information about the PAC, which for those of you who don't know is the Physical Activity Center. So all your members are in regular times able to join the pack and use the workout machines and swim laps in the pool and that kind of thing. Um, so stay tuned for that. Again, there's another question about the pack. Do we have any other questions or staff? Did I leave anything out? One thing, Nancy, I know you talked about is, is just not making assumptions for people that are choosing to continue to wear masks. Absolutely, yes. The, you know, mask optional doesn't mean don't wear a mask. So um, if someone has on a mask, we shouldn't assume that they're not vaccinated or we shouldn't assume that um, we shouldn't assume anything. It's just they're wearing a mask today and, and somebody else isn't wearing a mask. So, yes, that, that's all that that means. And so um, masks are still welcome, of course, and will not be. It's just a no, no it, not an issue. So any other Nancy, questions? Nancy, um, yeah. as far as music events are concerned, um, they will still be open to the public. Masking will be, um, if, it, if, if it is required, I'll include that in Ollie Notes. Okay, yes, great. Thank you, Jessica. Yes, so yes, we, as we said, there are different events that may or not be open to the public, and if they have a masking requirement, we'll include that in the information so that you're not surprised um, when you arrive to the event. Um, okay, so I'm seeing some more questions here. Okay, so um, for the, we, we've had some classes, as, as you know, during the year, we have sort of limited some of our um, class enrollment sizes, not, it, not to achieve full six foot distancing, but to just have a little bit less density in the rooms. For example, in the old days, we would have 140 people in the Crabtree room, and we didn't feel like anybody felt comfortable with that many people in a room, so we've limited those classes in the fall to 80 people, and this winter we actually had nine, up to 90 enrolled in those classes. So we're looking at whether we can um, increase those a little bit. We're, we're, we're working on that, so stay tuned for that information. Um, we are, as far as registration goes, if you're on a waiting list for a class, we are looking at where we can let more people in classes, so we will call as soon as we have a place for that. Um, so that's the same question. Can you ride bikes on campus? Yes, actually campus has been open for bike riding for, um, gosh, almost a year now. So, so yes, campus is open for you to walk on campus, ride bikes. I don't know specifically about the Swamp Rabbit Trail. I know that has been blocked off. So I don't know about that. Well, Jessica, let's make a note to find out about that. And we'll put that in the Ollie notes. Um, yes, hooray that the library is available. Um, here's a great question. Do I anticipate that Zoom classes will continue into the future? Absolutely. We have realized that Zoom has allowed us to do a lot of things we weren't able to do before. For one thing, we're reaching people who could never have gotten to Furman in the first place. Um, people who maybe are, are homebound have been able to join Ollie by Zoom. We've also heard from Ollie members who've been with us for a long time who were saying, you know, it's getting harder and harder for me to get to campus. If you keep Zoom, I won't lose Ollie um, because Ollie is so important to me. So that's another thing. We've been able to invite from an alumni from all over the country to join us on Zoom. And that's been a great way to connect from an alumni with their university. Um, and then, we also have heard from people who have said, you know, I live way down in Simpsonville. There have been times when I didn't take a class that I would like to take because I didn't want to come out to Ollie three days in a row. So now I would come maybe one day and have the full experience, bring my lunch, take two classes, see my friends, and then another day take a Zoom class. So for all of those reasons, yes, we are always going to have some Zoom offerings going forward. May not be the class you want it to be on Zoom, but we always have some Zooms. Um, any more restrictions on special interest groups? Heidi, I'm putting you on the spot here, but can you think of anything specific about that? 
No, I can't. Um, no, because we'll be able to meet in person and um, be close together. So no, I don't see any um, limitations. I will say there are some special interest groups that are meeting on Zoom and that will be up to that leader. So I would expect, for example, the Italian SIG will continue to meet on Zoom, um, which doesn't have anything to do with COVID, but more logistics. And so each, each look to hear from each special interest group in that regard. Okay, thank you. Um, here's another great question. This is one of our um, marketing minded members saying, have we done an outreach program to call or email those pre-pandemic members who did not call back? Yes, they will be hearing from me over the weekend or on Monday to um, say, guess what? We are, if, if you've been staying away for that reason, now's your time to come back. So yes, thank you for thinking of that. And um, we definitely want to encourage people to join us if masks were the reason they were staying away. Um, any other questions? Oh, I'm getting a lot of questions, Eric, about your background. I'll tell y'all a little bit. He's a Furman graduate. Um, he majored in math and computer science. I told him, he lived in Plyler Hall, and I tried real, start, real hard when I was at Furman to not go in that building. So we, we did not cross paths. Um, and he has recently retired from a, a federal government uh, job. So he is, like you, many of you, retired, but he wasn't quite ready to quit working. So this has been a nice in-between job for him, I believe. Did you want to say something else, Eric? Exactly. I was just going to, you know, piggyback on what you said. I my last job, I had been with the federal government, like she said, uh, for 27 and a half years. So I've been stuck in one place for a long time. And uh, I told Nancy yesterday, my plan is to be here. Hopefully, if you'll have me, my plan is to be here for a long time. So I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's great. Um, Eric has a, a daughter in college and two sons in high school. Yes. Um, so if you drop by his desk in a couple of days, you may see some pictures there. And so I think you will all enjoy getting to know him. And I know he is looking forward to meeting all of you. Yes. Let's see. I don't think I missed any other questions. I'm, I'm looking back through to make sure. Um, I'm seeing lots of happiness. The library is opening and um, lots of nice welcomes to Eric. Yeah, I think. Oh, here's a new one. OK, let's see. Okay. Um, yes, um, our, we've got people volunteering to help um, call our lapsed members and bring them back. That's a great idea and something I had not thought about that. So we will certainly keep you in mind, this person who just volunteered to do that. Um, so thank you for that offer. And that is a great idea. So I guess that's everything. I'm not seeing any more questions. Okay, well, um, as always, if you have any questions or concerns about masks or COVID or, or anything else, you can always call me, send me an email, come by my office. I'm always glad to talk to you. And I hope you all enjoy this beautiful day and have a nice weekend. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye, Nancy. Have a great weekend. You too, Anne. It was great to see you. Okay, bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate all you've